The classification and properties of triangles. Triangles are the simplest form of a polygon. While polygon means many-sided figure, the triangle is the polygon with the fewest number of sides, three. There are two major classifiers of triangles. One, the type of angles they have, and secondly, the relations of the side lengths of triangles. The standard generic triangle is a regular polygon and can be called a regular triangle. Each of its three interior angles is equal in measure and so it is an equiangular triangle. In a drawing, equiangularity can be shown by a short line segment across all angles demonstrating that each angle is equal in measure. Any triangle having each interior angle less than 90 degrees is called an acute triangle. Since equiangular triangles have each angle less than 90 degrees in measure, they are also classified as acute triangles. Triangles having an interior angle of 90 degrees are classified as right triangles. A little square drawn at the vertex between the arms of an angle shows that the angle is a right angle or is 90 degrees in measure. Triangles having their largest angle greater than 90 degrees in measure are called obtuse triangles. Now we will shift gears to discuss classification of triangles according to side length. Equilateral triangles have all sides equal in length. The short line segments on each side identify each side as equal or congruent. Equilateral triangles are also equiangular triangles. In a drawing where there is more than one angle or side equal, one set of angles or sides may be marked with two short line segments to show equality or congruence. The next category we'll look at is an isosceles triangle. Isosceles triangles have at least two sides that are the same length. Isosceles triangles also have two angles that are equal. This particular triangle is an isosceles right triangle because it has a right angle and two sides that are equal. Scalene triangles have all sides of a different length like this one. This scalene triangle, since its largest angle looks to be an obtuse angle, is also an obtuse triangle. This triangle is a right scalene triangle because all sides differ in length, but it also has a right angle. Each triangle is thus classified into categories according to sides and according to angles. Accordingly, we'll, we will have at least two descriptors for each triangle. For instance, this triangle is an acute triangle because all its angles are less than 90 degrees, but it is also a scalene triangle since all its sides differ in length. This triangle that we looked at earlier with a right angle and two sides equal is an isosceles right triangle. Another useful characteristic of triangles is that measures of their interior angles add to 180 degrees. This is called the triangle sum theorem. So in this triangle, angles A, B, and C added together or their sum equal 180 degrees. So if we know two of the interior angles, we can deduce the third by subtracting both of the known measures from 180 degrees. For instance, in this triangle, we are given that angle E is a right angle and angle D is 60 degrees in measure. We can calculate the measure of angle F by subtracting 90 and 60 from 180 degrees. If we have an isosceles triangle, we only need to know one angle to figure the measures of the other triangle, other angles. For instance, if we know that this angle, angle J, is 70 degrees in measure, we know that angle I would also have to measure 70 degrees. And that would give us enough information to find the measure of angle H by taking 180 minus 70 minus 70, which would equal 40 degrees. If we know the smallest angle of an isosceles triangle, like this one, or we know the smallest angle P is 50 degrees, we don't know the remaining angles yet, but know that they have to all add up to 180 minus 50 or 130 degrees. And since angles Q and R are equal, we can find their measures by taking 130, which is left over from subtracting 50 from 180, and dividing that 130 by 2. So they each measure 65 degrees. Let's look at another application of the triangle sum theorem. Find the measure of angle O. To set it up with an equation, all angles sum to 180. We have 2G plus G 
plus 9 plus 27 equal 180. We combine like terms 2g plus g make 3g and 9 plus 27 make 36. This becomes minus 36 when we move it over to the other side of the equal sign. So we have 3g equals 144. 144 divided by 3 is 48, so g equals 48. Is that our answer? No, it's not. We're asked to find the measure of angle O, so we plug in 48 for g. 48 plus 9 equals 57, so angle O is 57 degrees in measure. We always have to look at what is being asked. We check our answer by also substituting 48 in the other angle as well. 2 times 48 is 96, so angle N, angle N is 96. We, we add the three angles together and get 180 degrees, so it checks out. Let's look at one last problem. Find the value of x. Stop the video and solve the problem, then restart it after you have your answer. Using the triangle sum theorem, we set up the equation x plus x plus 38 equals 180. Combining like terms, we have 2x plus 38 equals 180. We subtract 38 from each side, cancel, bring down what's left, 2x equals 142. We divide both sides by 2, cancel. x equals 142 divided by 2, so that would equal 71. We check by seeing if all angles add to 180, and since 71 plus 71 plus 38 equal 180, x does indeed equal 71 degrees. We box in our correct answer. This has been just an introduction to the classification of triangles, plus a brief introduction to the triangle sum theorem. Thanks for viewing.